So now we are ready to um, prepare to start the engines and get pushback. So we'll do the engine start flow. So this one is uh, rather short compared to the others. So uh, for the captain's side, uh, you go ahead and you turn the beacon on and make sure that nose wheel steering is off. And then also, typically the first officer would turn the fuel pumps on, get the doors, make sure the doors are closed. So you come down here to the doors page, make sure everything is showing closed there turn the transponder on so this should always be on the side of the flying pilot so if the captain's flying it'd be on uh, the number one transponder if the first officer was flying it'd be on the number two transponder if captain's flying today so we have it on the number one and make sure that the flight deck door is locked so typically you'd push on that make sure all the latches are closed and that this flight deck door thing is in the either the auto or the deny uh, phase so now we would be ready to run the checklist for uh, clear to start or the engine start check on the checklist that I provided in the description of this video. So from here, we'll be ready to start the engine. All right, so now we're ready to start up our engines and typically you would do this uh, when you're starting your pushback if the pushback crew tells you you're clear for start but you can see they've already pushed us back so we'll start the engines right here on the ramp and this is just for training purposes today so it's a first flight is what we're simulating so we'll start the number one engine here on the left side first do a fuel check valve test by turning off the boost pumps looking for the associated ICUS messages turn the boost pumps back on and then we'll start engine number two now that's what you do on a first flight of the day the other flights of the day Typically, you start the number two engine first, and the reason for that is the aft and forward cargo compartments are on the left side of the plane. So that way, if they're bringing, if the rampers are bringing up late bags, there's not going to be an engine running on the side of the aircraft where they are. And you wouldn't have to do the fuel check valve test on the other flights of the day. That's just on the first flight of the day. But like we said, this is a first flight, so we're going to start engine one, then two. So we'll come up here to the start panel. Hold down the start button for the number one left engine, two to five seconds to release. The start light is on. We'll start our timer to observe our starter time limits per the limitations which we looked at in the first step of this training program. And you can see we have the left engine start status message. And we're watching for the N2 to get up to 20%. Make sure the ITT is below 120 Celsius and usually you want it to be below 114 and hit the red tab and move the thrust lever up to idle and then we have fuel flow and we're just waiting on light up here just takes it a second there's our light up ITT's rising so we keep an eye on that make sure it isn't rising abnormally fast up toward that red mark there that would indicate a potential hot start so you which is something you do not want to have. All right, so at 50%, we should have the uh, start light cut out, which it has. And the left engine start status message is out. And the engine will stabilize. So now what we'll do, we'll turn off the left and right boost pumps, and we should get a fuel low pressure on the side where the engine is not operating. So that's the right side. So see a right fuel low pressure caution message which is what we want to check that the fuel check valves work in so we'll turn the boost pumps back on that check is complete and now we can start number two so we'll hold down the start button two to five seconds that start lights on reset our timer here so we can observe these starter time limits and we have n2 waiting for 20 percent and make sure our ITT is below 120 Preferably 114. That'll keep the engine from aborting the start with the computers on board. Hit the red tab. Move the thrust lever up to idle. And we have fuel flow. Just waiting on the light up. And the ITT rise. And for whatever reason, it takes it a little while in the Aerosoft CRJ to light up. But there it goes. And it's looking like a normal... ITT rise trend 
which is good. And we'd keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the engine for any messages that would uh, cause us to use one of those immediate action items that we talked about in step two of the training program. All right, and it looks like we have a good start. So we'll continue with our after start flow in the next video.